Hello! In today's video, we are talking about the temperature and pressure relief valve. This is a safety mechanism for your hot water tank. And as a homeowner, you should know what it is, how to test it, and how to service. Some people may say that you should never touch this valve, and that's not true. Matter of fact, you should test this at least once a year per the tank and the valve instruction. And it is true that if you do test this valve regularly, it may drip and that drip may never stop. That's a sign that you should service, not a sign that you did something wrong. On regular operation, you have cold water coming in, the tank heats up the water, and it goes out to your faucets in your house. Now, for whatever reason, there's a failure in these tanks where the heat source doesn't turn off, either by a faulty thermostat or it's just stuck continuously on that would generate a lot of pressure inside the tank and that pressure needs to go somewhere then it comes the relief valve if you do happen to have occasional drips from your relief valve that's potentially caused by sediment that's stuck inside and what we can do to alleviate that it's open and close this few times allowing water to come out and push sediment or any obstruction that's inside the valve clear. That should solve any of the small drips that you have. If that did not solve your problem, good thing you tested because it's a sign you should replace your valve. We know the tank is full of water. We're gonna drain the water just enough where it gets below the relief valve. For this tank, that's about 10 gallons of water. To start the replacement process, first thing you do, you shut off the main water source to the tank. If you have a circulating pump, like I have in this case, make sure to trace the cord and unplug it. For gas hot water heaters, you can set it back to pilot. If you have an electric hot water heater, you may set either to vacation mode or pilot Grab yourself a garden hose and connect it to the bottom of the water tank, opening a hot side of any of the faucets in your home. And if your tank is similar to mine, all you need is a flathead screwdriver to open the drain. Once you have drained about 10 gallons of water, you should be able to remove the relief valve. You can check that it drained enough by opening the relief valve. If no water comes out, the water level is definitely below the relief valve. You can use a large adjustable wrench to break loose the relief valve and remove it completely. There are four key criteria you should be looking at when shopping for your TNP relief valve. The temperature, the pressure, the BTU, and the length. Again, all this information is found on your current valve. Let's start prepping the relief valve with blue monster tape and some threaded sealant to ensure I don't cross thread the TMP valve. I start with tightening by hand and I switch over to channel locks. Make sure that TMP valve it's tight but not too tight and also that is facing down so you can install your runoff tube. With the TMP valve installed, you are now ready to turn everything back on. First, let your cold water back in. If you have a circulation pump, go ahead and plug that back in. And then the last piece is to turn on the heat source for the water heater. This replacement should solve about 80% of your problems. If you still see drips on your relief valve, there's two other places you should be checking. Your house pressure regulator or the expansion tank. If you do not have an expansion tank like I do over here, I recommend you adding one. If you do have one and it's dripping, there's a possibility this tank has failed. And if that's the case, check the next video on how to service your expansion tank and replace it. I hope you guys learned something from this video and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.